I just wanted to make a quick video about our favorite trout lures, which are the Japanese domestic market lures. Uh, I fly fished for about 20 years and so did my father. We transitioned into lure fishing about four years ago and I actually find it much more exciting uh, than fly fishing personally. In my parts, it's actually rare to find lure fishermen on the lakes. Uh, where I live, everybody fly fishes. Uh, when we transitioned into lures, we primarily got into spin fishing, small spoons for trout. Uh, we spent a fair bit of money on North American lures. The North American manufactured lures work fine, and we caught some decent fish on them. Uh, and I'll show a picture of a decent trout on a North American lure, so by no means am I knocking them. With that said, from there I started to learn about Japanese domestic market lures. After researching them, I made a few orders from Japan for lures. Uh, my father and I uh, started to use JDM lures for the last two years, and with that said, we rarely use North American made spoons outside of the Gibbs Croc and the Acme Castmaster. Uh, we still rely on those two, yeah, here and there. Um, so yeah, by no means am I saying North American spoons are poor quality and not productive, but with that said, our catch ratio has gone up two to one in favor of the JDM lures. So they definitely seem to outproduce the North American lures, uh, for us at least. At this point, I'd like to mention some design points that give the JDM lures the edge, in my opinion. Uh, the point number one is the thinner, more cup-shaped profile, which creates a much more dramatic wobbling action in the water. Uh, the advantage to the extreme concave uh, profile they have is that it allows for a slower retrieve speed, and it does not sink as fast as the North American lures. Because the shape of the lure is exaggerated, it requires very little flow of water by it for it to complete its action. And with that said, it causes the lure to plane in the water, for lack of a better term, at a very slow retrieve speed. Uh, this dr more dramatic wobbling action and the ability for the action to work as the lure is retrieved extremely slowly seems to entice fish a lot more than the North American lures. A lot of my North American lures, you retrieve them slow and they just sit on their side and they just run through the water. They don't actually complete the action and they generally just sink. Whereas the Japanese lures, they just require a very slow retrieve speed and they just sit up off the bottom of the lake, which is excellent. Uh, the second point I would like to mention that I think gives them the edge is the better color selection. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory, but you cannot buy lures with a wider array of color selection outside the JDM lures. Uh, for us, this is an advantage as we buy many variations of color patterns, from the color variations on silver and gold lures to the white and black lures which we utilize. Uh, sometimes we want lures that are more neutral than silver and gold, so we opt for white lures at midday and black at dusk and dawn. We also like the earth tone color lures as well. And we do utilize a couple of the neon colors for when the fish are uh, just not, don't seem to be biting. And sometimes the, uh, like the bright neon lures will get their attention. So this is just to show the color variations of the lures that you can get uh, from the Japanese domestic market. This frame shows the Smith DS's and the four different sizes we have them in. Six and a half grams, five grams, four grams, and also three grams. I do have some duplicates in here just because the ones that are very effective, I always have two of them in my tackle box in case I lose one uh, during the day. And this shows the Smith Dia edges. You can see the machine uh, cut checkering, how it reflects the light at every angle.
And then we get into the forest mew colors that I prefer. Uh, you can see the yamini and the, the blacks I like, and then the white variations. And then I also have some red and gold, which are always consistent. I got some Shimano Slim Swimmers in this frame. Uh, some Bucks brand lures as well, which I find to be effective. But yeah, just a vast array of colors that you can play with to get the rainbows to bite. And then in this frame, it's mostly the Forest Muse, which I which are all in three and a half grams. I find these extremely effective in the shoal areas. You can retrieve these lures super slow, and yet they still have a really wild action. You can see your rod tip snap back and forth. With all of these lures, the action is so pronounced on them. In the bottom left, there's a couple six gram forest I realize, which is a very consistent lure. But yeah, I just wanted to give you the, an oversight of the colors you can get from the JDM market. Now, these aren't all my lures, but uh, these are the ones I find to be the most effective. And all of these come with me every time I go fishing for trout. The third point I'd like to mention is that the JDM lures come with better terminal tackle right out of the box. The hooks are usually the Cultiva brand and they are the right size for trout. To simply explain this, let me show you a Gibbs Croc compared to a Smith BS. So you can see the size of the hook on the Gibbs Croc as opposed to the Smith DS. It's much more massive, so are the split rings, and it also comes with a giant barrel swivel. So I prefer my lures tuned down to the size of trout when I'm trout fishing. I don't want a massive hook like this. With that said, I'm not criticizing the Gibbs Croc in any way. Uh, these lures are sold as a salmon lure, and they are literally meant to land a 50 pound Chinook salmon. So yeah, I have no criticism against them, but they're just set up for a bigger fish than I am targeting. Uh, the JDM lures, yeah, generally require no tuning to get them into the water at all. And one thing I'll mention in the hooks for the JDM lures also come in different diameters. So for the trout uh, lures, they're actually a finer diameter, which equals uh, better hook sets and deeper hook sets because it's much easier for the hook to penetrate the mouth of the fish. The fourth point I'd like to mention is uh, generally better attention to detail when it comes to the JDM lures. Uh, with a few exceptions, the lures are longer and narrower, which better imitate bait fish. The length of the lure also means that there are more distance between uh, the fish teeth and the leader line, which equals a lot less snap leaders, which is important for us. Uh, some of the lures even come with uh, bite markers and sight markers, which the Japanese feel are important for the fish to uh, strike accurately at the lure. So I'll show you a Smith DS. You can see the chartreuse and the orange dots are actually bite and sight markers. And those are meant to aid the fish when they make a strike on the lure. And another thing uh, that I find the Japanese give great attention to is the lure retrieve uh, depth. The, every one of their lures is rated for uh, different depths, and I find that handy. Uh, uh, whether you're fishing on still water or moving water, you can choose the right lure for the right depth. Obviously, you can slow down the retrieve speed of North American lures to get the lure down there more, but that generally negatively affects the action of the lure. So I do like that the Japanese uh, rate their lures for different depths and they also provide uh, many lines of lures to go deeper or shallower as you need. Uh, the fifth point I'd like to mention, it's not really an advantage, but it's something worth mentioning, is that uh, the price is no more expensive than North American lures. And for us in Canada, it's actually even cheaper than buying lures, say at Canadian Tire in many uh, instances. The lures average around four to six dollars in the United States currency. So that's actually pretty good at the end of the day uh, for a spoon. So I'd like to talk about manufacturers and the individual lineups of the manufacturers that we like to use. Uh, the two most popular manufacturers I purchase are Smith Limited and the Forest brand. 
I have lures from many other Japanese domestic manufacturers, but these two companies I seem to come back to the most as they produce the most on the water. I will start off with the Forest brand and their MIU brand of lures. I'm not sure how to pronounce the MIU, so I just you all use the letters. Uh, these happen to be the best selling spoons in Japan. Uh, they also make a steadily wobbling action without darting or irregular actions. It's great for shallow water as it's lightweight makes it suspend in the water at a very low retrieve speed. Uh, these come in a, a wide variety of weights, but generally I purchase them in 2.2 grams to 4.2 grams. I also have a few in the 7 gram range and I do have some of the 5 gram uh, MIU lures. I'll show you uh, some of my favorites. I definitely like this one. It's got a pearl with a slight touch of green on it but it's got a white back on it. That seems to be a very effective uh, forest mew. This one also seems to produce as well. It's got a beige with like a pink uh, bottom on it with an earth tone brown on the back. That seems to be a very good one. And this is also a classic uh, the silver on one side, then the silver with the speckles and the blue. Something about silver and blue produces in every line of lure, whether it's a Castmaster or a JDM. This one also seems to be especially good in the, uh, the three and a half gram range, which I'm showing you. It's uh, the abalone. It's got like an abalone finish on one side, then it's gold on the other. And I can't mention the little spoons without uh, not showing some of the black ones. The black with the speckle seems to work really good at times. Uh, black just sticks out in the water like a sore thumb, so some, it's easy for the fish to see and they strike it. This is also a highly effective one. It's got a, I would say like a chartreuse spot at the bottom. Then it's got some silver on the rest of that side. And then on the reverse, it's got a, the reflective silver finish. So I will do a video uh, showing all the new uh, lures that I have, and then you can get a wide, uh, to see the wide selection of colors that we utilize. But at the end of the day, I prefer these lures and the three and a half gram offering. They're just so good at a, they're so great, like shallow water at a slow retrieve speed. They always seem to produce for us, and they're definitely one of my first lures I go through, go for every day. So here, a close up of the forest MIUs that I have in the three and a half gram range. You can see we have a wide variety of colors. And to be honest, not one of these colors do not produce on the water. So it's just a very effective lure. And all of these are in the three and a half gram range. And I do have a few in the five gram range up here. So the second line of the forest lures that I like is their PAL line. Uh, the PAL line is actually more of a teardrop shape than the MIU line. And it's actually meant to be retrieved even slower than the MIU line. And uh, I'll show you a comparison of a forest mew next to a PAL. And hopefully you can see the difference in the teardrop shape and the PAL, which is the black one. It's a little wider and it's a little more teardrop shape, so that allows it to be retrieved even slower, which can be a great advantage at times. So my favorite PAL is probably this one, the silver with the white backing. That's just an effective lure all the time, uh, any time of day for any water conditions, that seems to be really good. Another one of my favorites is the blue and silver. That's always a good color combination in any lure. And then also this seems to work very effective too is the red and gold. This is a newer one, but it's showing some promise. Uh, this color green just seems to entice the rainbow. So we've caught a couple on this, but I haven't put a lot of hours into this lure yet. 
but I'm sure it'll be as productive as the other ones. And then also we always always have a black one. Uh, sometimes black is just a color they key on for whatever reason because it's easy for them to see because it sticks out like a sore thumb in the water. So yeah, those are the PAL line that I have and uh, those are all three and a half gra uh, 3.8 grams in weight. And uh, yeah, they seem to be very effective as well. So the next brand that we like is the Smith Limited brand. And the lines that we favor in the Smith Limited brand are the Edge Dia, the Drop Dia, and the Smith DS. And apparently the DS stands for Dart and Swim for that particular line of lures. Generally, these lures are longer and narrower, and they resemble minnows more so than the forest uh, spoons that we utilize. Uh, the Anything from Smith has proven to be very effective uh, for us. So I'll show you a few of the Smith DS spoons in the six and a half gram range. And I'll show you the ones that seem to be the most effective for us. This one here with the, the touch of white and green uh, seems to be quite effective. This is a good one as well. You can see the Yamami markings on there in the orange. This one's also very productive. And then good old silver is always a good one as well, just straight silver. And then also I'll mention gold. Generally the rule is silver on sunny days and gold on cloudy days. So we follow that and that seems to help us a lot. And then we'll get into the Smith uh, die edge. So these are actually the same weight as a Smith DS, but they're actually a bit longer and more willow shaped. They both weigh six and a half grams, but this one definitely gets down deeper because it's more willow shaped and it's a little longer and narrower. You can see the machine cut checkering on this, on this particular line, and that's just, it reflects the light really well into the water. So this one we utilize to get a little bit deeper. And I will say that my favorite color on these, if I can find it, is this one right here. It always seems to produce for us. It's got the par markings on it and just a regular silver back size. This lure also comes down to three gram uh, weight rating as well. And we've utilized that and we've been had some productive results with that on several of the lakes in a, a where we fish. And then the last are these ones, which are the drop dies from Smith. Now these are wider. Uh, you can see how they're wider than the Smith DS's. They're meant to cup a little more water and you can retrieve these ones extremely slow. And good old silver for them is a color that always seems to produce for us. But yeah, I definitely highly recommend uh, checking out the Smith Limited brand if you're looking for great spoons for uh, rainbow trout fishing. And here is a close-up of the Smith DS spoons and its different color variations that it comes in. I'll start off with the six and a half gram spoons. Then it'll transition into the five gram spoons. Then we have a four, then we have a few in the four gram range. And then we finish off with a couple in the three gram range. But that gives you an idea of the Smith DS, which I think is a very effective trout lure. So here are some of the edge dyes and the different colors they come in. These are all six and a half grams. Then I have some smaller ones at 4.7 grams. And then we get into the drop dyes at five grams and then three grams. The type of fishing we do at the end of the day, I guess you could describe it as pretty specific and it revolves around using light spoons, light lines, and light reels, and light rods to catch rainbow trout. 
we use the light lines to increase the lure action and the light lines also maximize our casting distance for every cast. We use light rods because we need light rods to cast out those light lures at a decent distance. Your average Canadian tire rod is just too heavy to cast out a light lure uh, at a good distance. We also like the light rods because they uh, are very forgiving when it comes to the bigger rainbow uh, trout shaking their heads when they're fighting you. The light rods just act as a shock absorber really well and they help soak up some of the action of the fighting fish. Uh, we also use light reels in the 1 to 2000 uh, series range. They pair very well with the rods we use and apparently those uh, reels require less inertia to start up the drag so it protects the line a little as well. I will mention that we anchor and cast. We do not troll any of these lures. We generally anchor in the shoals or the thermocline where the fish live and we'll cast and retrieve there uh, all day long and we do that generally year round we're in those areas uh, if people are curious where i buy any of these lures i purchase them all at japantackle.com and just to be clear i have no affiliation to them except for i've been just been a customer of theirs for a while now i find their customer service really good also like i place an order from japan and it's literally at my door in canada within four to five days from placing the order so they're very efficient and the shipping rate is a flat shipping rate of $26. So if you buy a bunch of lures, you're only paying $26 for the shipping. I will do another video on the different JDM lures that I have and use, but today I just wanted to focus on the main ones that we've found to be the most productive.